Hello everyone, we are delighted to talk to you today about the uh, degrees that we have here at the University of Wolverhampton in relation to policing and fire and rescue. For the next 30 minutes, um, myself, O'Brien and Tony will discuss with you the various degrees that we offer here and answer any questions that you might have. Um, Myself and O'Brien will speak to you first around the policing degrees and Tony will speak to you after that in relation to fire and rescue. Please, if you have any questions whatsoever, then feel free to um, post those questions in the chat and we will answer them for you. So, first of all, in relation to policing, your lecturers are myself, Sally Kearney, and I am the course lead for professional policing, the new professional policing uh, degree. However, I do teach across both degrees um, over the three years. And in a short moment, I will uh, spend a minute or so just telling you a little bit about me. We also have O'Brien Granderson, who will introduce himself in one moment too. And John McDaniel, Dr. John McDaniel, um, who is the course lead for policing and intelligence degree. So I'm Sally Kearney. I joined West Midlands Police Force about um, well, uh, ooh, a long time ago. <laughs> and I spent 16 years as a police officer, starting out as a response officer. I then progressed to become a specialist officer in child protection and domestic abuse. And basically that's where my interest lies. Um, my expertise is in child protection and vulnerability. I spent many years as a police trainer, training student officers uh, to become police officers. And that's basically the training that if you were to join a police service, you would undergo um, initially. I, have, I haven't got the time to be able to tell you about the fantastic and exciting and, and, and rewarding career that I have had uh, within the police. However, um, the team, the policing team here at Wolverhampton will draw upon all of our experiences throughout your studies to help you understand the theory that underpins practical policing. O'Brien, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so thank you, Sally. Uh, Brian Granderson, as Sally's just said. Um, I'm coming with about 30 years worth of policing service um, and uh, having uh, recently retired and started working at uh, this university and prior to that, another one. Uh, Policing is a wonderful career and you're in the right place and at the right university to study it with. My experiences has taken me from uh, routine response policing to some forms of uh, neighbourhood policing, uh, road traffic, um, criminal investigation, focusing on robberies and vehicle crime, um, a re centralised response um, unit called the operational uh, support unit, um, and then into different management um, guises that um, gave me insights to what goes on into planning police operations, into larger force events, working as partnerships, um, and delivering more force, um, force um, events, as well as force solutions, and not just local solutions. And we bring all of that to you um, to help underpin some of the theories that we cover uh, in, to help you get through your degree. Uh, and I was thinking recently, would I say, what would I say to my younger self? Uh, and that is to do exactly the same as you did before, um, but get a degree under your belt earlier rather than later. Um, so you come to the right place and I'll hand back to Sally, he'll take you through the rest of the slides. Thank you very much, O'Brien. So, first of all, I wanted to discuss with you um, the two degrees that we offer here at Wolverhampton and the differences between the two. If um, you may be aware that the College of Policing have now instigated the PEQF, which is the Police Education Qualification Framework, as it says on this slide here. And it basically is saying that all new police constables will be required to have an educational qualification in policing either before they join the police force um, in England and Wales or once they have joined. What we offer here at Wolverhampton is the professional policing pre-joined uh, degree which is licensed um, by the College of Policing. And so if you are really sure that you want to become a police officer, a police constable, then this degree, the pre-joined degree, is the degree that police forces around the country will require you to have to join on their pre um, join entry route as a graduate and you will not be required to do any more um, 
educational qualifications unless you choose to do so. You will have all of the requirements. What I will say to you is that a um, graduating in three years time with the pre-join professional policing degree from uh, here at Wolverhampton does not guarantee you a place within a particular police service, police force. You will still be required to undergo the recruitment process. There is a currency of five years, so you are expected within five years of graduating to apply to a police service and use your pre-joint degree in that way. The other degree that we offer is the policing and intelligence um, degree, which could be used for the graduate degree holder entry program. So the policing and intelligence degrees for those um, for those of you out there that are not actually quite sure that policing, being a police officer, police constable, um, is the route for you. However, you are interesting in policing and intelligence in organisations such as, for example, um, Border Force, National Crime Agency. If you're interested in intelligence, different pathways um, around cybercrime, etc., then policing and intelligence may be the degree for you. If you decide at the end of your degree with policing and intelligence that actually I do want to be a police um, officer, however, I haven't got my pre-joined degree, you can join on the graduate degree holder entry programme that police services forces will be um, offering and do offer at the moment, but you will be required to do a postgraduate diploma in professional policing, which is paid for by the police force and will require you to attend a university in order to get that qualification whilst um, working within the police service. So that is um, the difference between the two. Um, I'm just briefly going to just show you now a couple of um, uh, examples of the modules for uh, that we do offer on both degree uh, programmes. First of all, for professional policing, it is all core modules. You have no options. You have no choice. It is the College of Policing curriculum, which you will um, go through. And as you can see on the slides, those are some of the modules that you'll be looking at. If you are to start on the policing and intelligence um, degree, you have core modules very similar, uh, which are the same as some of the professional policing modules, and you will be working and studying together as a cohort. Um, however, you have some options, as you can see there. You've got some options in relation to forensic science, um, computing and legal issues and human rights, media. Um, and so there are some of the options that are available to you in year one. As you move through the module, uh, through the years, <clears throat> As you can see for professional policing, those in blue are the core modules that you will um, that you will um, uh, take and policing and intelligence there are some of the optional modules um, on your on your right that you uh, can choose from. So policing and intelligence students, the core modules are those in blue. Uh, professional policing students will study all of those on the left hand side. So that is just a flavour, really, of some of the modules, the types of modules that you'll be looking at. If I just hand um, back over to O'Brien, who will talk to you about some of the learning and teaching uh, and employability opportunities for you within policy. OK, so um, quick thing in relation to this for us is that when you have, um, as you're completing your degree, um, you're going to be able to find um, that we're going to encourage you to um, become a police volunteer. Um, so you can put some of these theories into practice. If you've definitely focused on going into policing, that's definitely the way they would suggest you go. And if you are interested in doing and joining the police family, then you can volunteer within different forces that's local to you or one that's local to the university and take advantage of their volunteering opportunities, whether it be in the form of um, uh, working within specialised departments such as forensics or within local policing or within the intelligence unit or whether it's about um, actually going out and doing something practical with uh, organisations such as Border Force uh, through the various airports um, or with any of the security services. But in order to get there, um, you've got to come and be with us at the university. And the way that we teach to get you that information, to give you that skills and confidence, is through a mix of lectures and seminars. Seminar, uh, sorry, lectures quite simply are where we impart lots of information uh, to you at a pace um, that we will check on to make sure that you're understanding um, so that you can go away and do any further reading. And when we talk about seminars, seminars are about putting that theory into practice through various exercises. 
Um, and we do that through group work, through small group work, where you may work within two, a group of two or three, and then come back and discuss that within the whole group um, who may be present for your lecture. And the whole idea about that learning is that you engage with each other, that you engage with, it, uh, with um, us. It's not just a matter of coming, sitting and listening and walking away, because that will only get you part of the information. So the more that you ask questions, the more that you have fun and enjoy what you're doing is, is the easier you will find that learning. And we also will get you to do some presentations, which you're probably going to hate. Um, but by the end of the first year, you'll absolutely love them and your confidence will have grown in different ways. And outside of those lectures, we'll give you um, different reading material from case studies. That's um, by that we mean that events that have happened over time that you can um, actually sit, uh, take apart to discuss with others and then bring back what you have gained from those case studies to discuss um, in the lectures or seminar. So the key things here which remember that attending for lectures and seminars are only part of your learning. The stuff that we know everybody loves is that wider reading and uh, it means tearing yourselves away from your other activities to make sure you actually um, set time aside to do um, all of that additional reading and as you come with us we'll talk more about it um, and what that means in terms of how many hours per week uh, but certainly in your first year make sure you set aside at least one hour per module um, per, per day so that's about three hours per night so one hour per module but then on the really exciting side of it um, we do lots of collaborative working we get different uh, police officers in from different roles um, you'll see um, Sally delivers things on road traffic and um, you, we get road traffic officers that will come in and you can crawl all over their vehicles play with some of those horns as well as look at some faults on various vehicles um, and we have visiting lecturers in that will um, come around the specialisms, whether that be investigation, whether that be counterterrorism, or whether they have uh, digital training. And certainly, as the veil of um, of the um, um, the um, COVID lifts, you'll find that we'll be getting out and about uh, to various other places. So that's really the mix of everything that we do. We hope that it's fun and engaging. Uh, we know that some of it can be um, uh, hard work to sit and read on your own, which is why it's important to always engage with us. And after that, you can virtually go into any police career that you like. Um, and some of which I've already alluded to. There's lots up on, the, uh, up on the screen. Please don't think that policing is just about being a uniformed police officer. It is far wider than that. And in policing in tomorrow, it's as much about the private sector and what they do. So from forensic investigation um, through to um, surveillance, uh, right the way through to what policing does. So open your minds in terms of what's available to you. So on that note, um, I shall hand you back to Sally for any further questions. Lovely. Thank you very much, O'Brien. Um, Folks, that is everything we wanted to say about um, policing. Well, in fact, it's not. We'd like to say a lot more, but unfortunately, we haven't got the time. Uh, and so what you will see on this slide here is our contact details. So please feel free to contact us, email us with any questions that you may have in relation to policing. Thank you very much. And I will hand over to Tony, who will talk to you about fire and rescue. Sally, have you cancelled your presentation now? Yes, I've stopped. I've stopped sharing. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at that then. Right. Okay. Uh, right, well, thanks for coming along today to uh, spend some time talking and listening to us uh, about the various degrees in the uh, University of Wolverhampton. My name is Tony Prosser. I'm uh, one of the course leads for the Fire and Rescue degree. Um, the contact details are available on this presentation. You can uh, get in contact with myself or Mark Taylor, the other 
lead for the course. So uh, whenever you want to contact us. Um, so fire and rescue degree, then what is it about? It's about getting you into the fire and rescue service, basically. Um, everything else is subsidiary to that. And the whole course is aimed at getting you into the career of your choice. Uh, the course leads myself and Mark Taylor. We designed uh, the course, uh, both serving fire officers uh, some years ago, um, and decided that we knew a good way of getting people who were keen on the fire and rescue service into the into the job. Um, so the course has been designed by firefighters, designed for aspiring firefighters. Um, what we've come up with is a three-year program, which will. Uh, obviously uh, enlighten you as to the insides of the fire and rescue service, but also prepare you professionally, not only for a career as a firefighter, but hopefully as a, a senior officer in the service. Uh, the course is staffed by people uh, who are experts in their field. Um, some of them have already done 40 years in the fire and rescue service, and others at least 30 years, and that have been senior officers. And what we like to uh, pride ourselves on is that we give you um, a ground truth, if you like, about what life in the fire and rescue service is. And um, hopefully you'll, you'll appreciate what a good career is and how you should enjoy 30 or 40 years in the fire service. And it'll go by far too quickly for everybody. So uh, these are the, the, the core staff. We've got people who are fire investigation specialists, uh, operational firefighting, fire safety and emergency planning. It's all brought together, coalesced into one course for you to have a good understanding so that when you leave the course, you'll be able to go into a, an interview and be able to blow their socks off basically because you'll know as much as the interviewers, hopefully. Um, it's a vocational degree. Uh, it's an undergraduate degree and looking at the same methodologies that are employed by the police, nursing, teaching, where you actually learn about the job and then you, you should move seamlessly into it. Obviously it requires academic study and hopefully you'll be volunteers to uh, undertake uh, community safety or operational response as a retained firefighter in one of the services. And what we're trying to do is, as it says there, foundation for knowledge and skills for a professional career. Um, this year it's been a little bit different. Um, as you know, life has changed because of uh, COVID. Um, but next year, hopefully, we'll be back to um, uh, normal running as soon as possible so you get the benefit of actually speaking to people about these things, asking those questions that are a little bit difficult to ask uh, when you're on a Zoom uh, uh, session. Hopefully, we're, we're missing everybody being in the same room as well, so we're looking forward to welcoming you back. Um, first year, then, uh, this is what you need to know about. Uh, first, an introduction to the Modern Fire and Rescue Service, which is all about you know how it works, how it's put together, where, where you can join and looking at different parts of the organization that you can support or go or follow the career path. Uh, fire risk management is how the fire and rescue services at strategic level look at putting fire services together. You're lucky because once you finish this course, you're going into the fire and rescue service at, at a, a time of unprecedented change. There'll be a lot of um, uh, collaboration and mergers of services and there'll be lots of opportunities for for young people who are, have a career in mind and are aiming for the top. If you're worried about your um, uh, maths and English skills, we have a mo module which is designed to bring you up to speed so you can uh, pass all the rest of the exams uh, and not have to worry about uh, numbers or, or words. Um, we do fine engineer, fine en fire engineering science, which is um, understand how fires start, how they develop, how they're extinguished. And then we start introducing the leadership to fire, leadership and command. Um, what that's about is looking at you as future officers in the service, giving you a basic understanding of, of, of the basic theories and how you apply them in, in the real world. And then fire dynamics and suppression. That's how the fires develop, how we put them out, basically. In the second year, we start to go a bit more in depth into specialist fire and rescue services because it's not just the uh, local community service. There's also airport, industrial, fire service, and we've got lots of students from overseas uh, fire departments who, who take part in the course. We look at emergency planning, how you respond to major floods or, or other sorts of disasters, how the organization of that is, is achieved. And then we upgrade the leadership of command to looking at how middle managers work within the service. We look at community safety and how fires are, are extinguished. 
uh, sorry, uh, and, and how we prevent them start in the first place. And um, we start looking at the um, uh, crime scene investigation, fire investigation, as well as hazardous materials, which is an increase in activity for the fire rescue service. In the third year, you undertake your project, which is always a good way of getting your foot in the door with your local fire and the rescue services, because you go to them and say, I have an idea for a project. Can I help you or can you help me with this? And of course, when you go for an interview in that service, then they know something about you and you've got something to talk to them, which is relevant to their, their service, which always adds to the mix. We look at strategic fire leadership and command, which is about how the services are managed and how the strategic decisions on funding and um, and fire cover are provided. There's some law involved in the, the 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 module because it is important that you understand how we fit into the legal framework in the UK. We look at collaborative working and risk management and then fire safety in the built environment. And all of this, as I'm sure you understand, is the whole course is underpinned by the changes coming in the fire service and also as a result of the Grenfell tragedy which is ongoing and will form a core part of the, the course. We'd like you to volunteer because it gives you an insight into the uh, service that you're about to join. And it also gives you um, experience which they will value. And it's like an added bonus point for when you go for those interviews or fill out an application form. Um, we have a different approach to studies in life. You know, we say that uh, don't contravene the law because it does affect your uh, uh, potential for being employed and that applies to you from now if you're thinking of a, uh, uh, a job in the fire service or the police then you you know it's very much more difficult if you've got a criminal record so keep yourself clean uh, we expect punctuality and promptness on the course politeness teamwork enthusiasm and commitment we look for a different student um, we're looking for people who are committed to the community, want to help others, want to work together. Uh, but it's really important as well that, you know, this is probably the last three years you're going to have where you're going to have uh, to please yourself. So, you know, you can enjoy yourself on a course as well. Don't forget. Um, what you can expect from us, uh, we've got contact details. It's supposed to be a three-day response, but usually we're, we're back to you within a couple of hours and we've got phone calls if there's an emergency and everything is confidential that you say to us. Um, and for the first year, they're the module you're going to take. We've already mentioned them. So um, that's coming to the end of it. Uh, all I can say is that I've spent 30 years in the fire service from firefighter to assistant chief, and it went far too quickly. Um, it's not like working for a living. It's great fun. It's a great, rewarding career. When you walk away from the job at the end of the day, you think, yeah, that's what it's about. So thanks very much. If you've got any questions, uh, you can contact myself or Mark Taylor on the email uh, or through the switchboard and normal routes in the university. That's me. Okay. Thank you all. Um, so uh, if you do have any questions for our academics here today, uh, we can get those answered for you. If you just want to pop them into the Q&A box, um, if you're on a laptop or computer, it's just down the bottom. Uh, if you're on a mobile or tablet, it's usually just at the top. Um, so we'll see if any questions come in. Um, we'll try and get those answered for you. Um, so feel free to put those questions in. It's all very quiet. The presentations must have been very good. <laughs> so if you do have any questions, uh, please put them into the Q&A box and we can get those answered for you today. Just to be reminded that the open day is still continuing. Um, so if you do leave this session and still do have questions, uh, feel free to get in touch with the academics as they've said rightly before. Uh, but also we have the Chatify function, which is on our website, which is still currently running for our open day today as well. Okay, uh, so we do have one question that's just come in, uh, and it's for you, Tony. So, uh, what practical things do you do on the fire course? Uh, right. Um, essentially, uh, fire and rescue services operate in different ways across the country. Uh, we did about 
eight years ago, we started running uh, a practical element during the summer, uh, a two week practical uh, firefighting course uh, where you put up holes and different bits and pieces. Um, our graduates who applied for jobs in the fire and rescue service then said, we, we, we've done some of this, the, the, this coursework. And they said, because of health and safety, they need to go through the training again. Um, we felt that uh, as students at that time, we were expected to pay for, for, the, for, the, for the training. Um, we felt it was unfair and decided that it wouldn't be appropriate. Um, that there would be benefits for it, but you still have to do all the course at the end of the, of the day. What we do is give you the uh, underpinning knowledge and, and ideas and understanding of the theory and concepts of firefighting. So actually, when you do join the fire service, there's a lot of stuff you won't need to worry about because you already know it. And in addition to that, you know, uh, you've got a different level of knowledge of the service. But in terms of practicalities, it's the same as um, most jobs is that you've got the academic qualification, but actually, they still like to train you because each fire service has a different way of uh, uh, doing things. Okay. Thanks for that, Tony. Uh, hopefully that's answered your question. Uh, yes, if, I, if I could finish on that, though, um, in terms of practical issues, we, we do uh, go to fire stations and uh, fire investigation departments, airport fire service, uh, and, and lots of visits and guest speakers. So we give you a good understanding of it. It's just we're not allowed to do the, uh, the hands-on training, if you like. Thank you very much. Um, so the next question is to our policing colleagues. Um, so how many lessons do you have a week for the policing course? Do you want to turn on Sally or shall I? I I'm, I'm happy to. Okay. Um, the, uh, you will do um, six module, sorry, um, six modules a year, three modules a semester, which effectively means you are getting uh, 12 hours per week. I've quickly done my maths in my head, um, of um, a combination of lectures and seminars. Mm. So um, we don't work in terms of if you're coming from uh, full-time education, we only work in seminars. So <clears throat> you'll start at the end of September and, and work and study for 12 weeks through to Christmas. Um, and during that time, you'll uh, that's what we call semester one, and you'll have um, three modules. Uh, and they will vary depending on which element of the policing degree you take and uh, as to its content but all that's available on the website uh, and if you do want more information i can put that link into chatify for you so you can take your time and browse at the different modular content um, but again just remember that there's theory and practice in with all of that lots of reflective learning lots of discussion um, and different resources that we bring into it um, and we quite often, and this year has been uh, exemplary for it, will utilise what's going on in the world, what's going on in the UK, uh, to help underpin um, the theories that we actually discuss with you, that underpin why police officers are police officers and why they do what they do. Can I just add to that, please? Okay, I just wanted to emphasise that the um, the policing degrees, um, and certainly the professional policing degree, um, and as I say, policing and intelligence are very much academic degrees. They are not um, what might be deemed as police training. We do not teach you to um, be police, police officers as such. You will get that once you um, apply to a police service. On both degrees, we will give you the um, theoretical underpinning to understand why the police behave in the way that they do, have the powers that they have and what how um, and what those powers actually are. And as Brian has said, all underpinning um, the, the, the theory underpins the practical aspect. And that's what we'll be um, we'll be speaking with you. Having said all of that, we do, as O'Brien said in the uh, presentation, we do a lot of um, as far as we can um, visits um, to show you the practical element. And we have a lot of operational police officers attend the university in order to give their um, practical experience, which you can relate to what you've learned in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have one more question in for you, Tony. Um, is there any local retained fire stations? Uh, depends where you live. Uh, um, Certainly, if you live in uh, any of the surrounding brigades, Shropshire, Staffordshire, um, Hereford, Worcester, 
and Warwickshire. Yes, they do. In the West Midlands, they don't have uh, retained retained firefighters, but um, but uh, there are other opportunities for volunteering as community safety uh, volunteers. In fact, we've got several of our students are now in the fire and rescue service as firefighters, having joined as volunteers when they were on the course, subsequently uh, pulled into the service for as a community safety specialist, and then transferred over to the operational firefighting uh, service. Um, you may be interested to know that on our part-time version of the course, we have uh, several uh, current firefighters uh, and one who's recently left the course has gone from a uh, supervisory level, which is watch manager, and he's now the acting deputy chief of Shropshire Fire Service, and that's in five years. So, you know, it is recognised outside uh, in the Fire and Rescue Service. So it's a good thing to have this degree and age of promotion and... Uh, and uh, progress within the service. Thank you. And so uh, if you do have any more questions, uh, one last shout out. Uh, so please do put them into that Q&A box. Uh, we will be ending the session shortly. Um, so if you do have any um, questions that you would like to ask, uh, please put them in now uh, so we can get those answered for you. Um, other than that, uh, we will bring in the, class, the uh, session to a close. Um, can't see any quick questions coming in. Um, so yeah, just a reminder uh, that we do have the open day still going on. Uh, so if you do have any questions after this, uh, think that you need to answer any questions um, that you can put them to our open day uh, on our Chatify on our website. Um, but with no further questions, uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Sally, uh, O'Brien and Tony uh, for their session today. Uh, hopefully it's been helpful to everybody that's been involved and just a big thank you for everybody that's attended.